right here on the Muskegon Channel. I'm Andy O'Reilly. There's Dave Cackley. You were the talk of the town last night. What? Oh, boy. Good, bad, indifferent. What? Um, well, I I don't I want to put this. It was um, our neighbor lady next door, Kathy, had uh, mm -hmm. had the neighborhood over for uh, a little get-together and you know, some snacks and, you know, holiday mm. cheer. Oh, that's nice. Like, it was nice, you know? And... Um, I, I I went, which was difficult because you don't like those gatherings. I, I'm not good at them. I, and it's I, nothing personal. And I it's was just... I was a complete square. Um, mm -hmm. I really added nothing to the conversation. At one point, we started talking about entertainment and things like. And what what do I have to offer? Um, the year P.T. Barnum made the circus a million dollars for the first time. You know, I don't I I, I don't fit in. I'm like a, I'm like a sore thumb. Okay. So anyway, um, we get through all that, but um, somebody, and I don't exactly remember who started the conversation, but they, they started asking about you. And I said, well, what would you like to know about Dave Cackley? And as we kind of went around the room, everybody had their theory about Dave. <laughs> so, Oh, this should be interesting. Um, one saw you as very casual and laid back and... Mm -hmm. Um, kind of like the surfer dude that shows up and does the traffic and then goes back out to his surfer lifestyle and mm -hmm. kind of, uh, um, sort, um, kind of Spicoli's his way through life. <laughs> right. Um, uh. the next one, um, who was the lady that owns the house, she's kind of like, I'll bet he's got four sport coats and he rotates through them and he's got one shirt. And he shows up five minutes before work starts and he goes through and he gets it all done and then he's gone. There's some validity to that. Um, uh, that, you know how scary close that is I, to see, reality? That's it. And then my neighbors across the street, Barb and Terry, Terry's, uh, Barb's never met you and wants to. Um, Terry is the guy you met and, you know, you know, yeah, Terry, he's really cool. Yeah. yeah. Terry's, you know, Terry's like, Hey, I'm Terry. Everything's great. You want me to yeah. fix your car? Yeah. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Terry's pissed because Barb met you or yeah, no, Barb's pissed because Terry met you and she mm -hmm. didn't. They're all saying, when can you get Dave up here for an event like this? So we can get together and talk with him. And then, and then the complications came along, you know, like mm -hmm. the, the what ifs with Dave. You know, what does it take to get Dave up here? Well, yeah, it's a bit of a, first of all, it's a bit of a trek for me. I have, uh, we've discussed uh, your hot tub. Yep, we've talked about how talked that about is, a, that is a very good carrot because I love hot tubs. Yep. I'm very we're, we're, pro but we hot did, tub. We if did make it known tub, to the group last night that there would be no hot tub time at all. And they agreed. Um, well, you just okay, don't no, want strangers in your hot tub. You, okay, first of all, I'm not a stranger. I'm uh essentially family and i fit in great with hot tub people we're a we're a we're a cat we're a casual lot we you know right. we like our you know we like our nice warm water we like to sit back maybe maybe have a enjoy a cocktail uh uh in the tub that's always good um, i i told them the rule and they they were like oh they were in agreement that you you can't go in the hot you can go in the lake that'd be nice you can take one of your cold that, water no, baths right no now. no i can take no First of all, it's cold shower. Whatever. Although I should do an ice bath too. But no, hot tubs are. I love hot tubs. All right. Well, anyway, they they agreed that we were right in telling you no. Um, and then that's a shame. I brought up the ideas of of uh, you know the the whole what it takes to get you here. You know, I I'm at McDonald's and I see a uh, tractor supply. How do I get there from here? Um, oh, that's not. First of all, I can get to your I can get to your house with no. Well, no, I still need directions, but. Um, and I rarely get lost. Rarely. I did the first couple of times, but I'm going to say it right now. No hot tubs, a deal breaker. I can't go. Nope. If there's no, if there's no potential of me relaxing in a hot tub, I'm not making that trek. Okay. Up well, Lake. I'm just not I, sorry. And then overnight I gave it a sleep to think about it mm -hmm. all because, you know, we've got some demand up here. People want mm -hmm. some Dave, which I, I can make happen. It's I'm sure it's going to cost me Again, some gas well, money, go. and probably no. a hamburger. And a know, burger, uh, burger, yeah, I can pay right. for my own and, gas. Anyway, anyway, I'm finishing my story. Then you can, then you can interject. But then I thought to myself, I've never been invited to Dave's. 
Not once, not ever. Look, see, you know, I, this is what I know about you. You never go anywhere. You, you don't, don't want to go places. I do know this. Oh, you don't know that. I do and, know. You know, this here's about something you. else you might not. Know. You look at you look at these things like I look at these things. You look at it, even if you're going to have fun, even if there'll be good conversation and a good time. It's the pain in the ass of having to actually make a trek anywhere. No, even if it's not really that far, like no. an hour. I mean, but we still both view those things as a pain in the ass. That even if we're going to have a good time, mm. we don't necessarily want. I've to never looked at it that way. I really. I just, in fact, the last time I came down to um, um, bum tussle, as you call but it, wherever it's at, yeah, uh, we okay. took pictures and Middleville, everything. Caledonia, took a whole area. Oh, okay. tourism yeah. thing. Uh-huh. Remember, I got a picture uh-huh. of the truck that was out <laughs> along the road, and I got there a picture go. of um, some old signs that were nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I took yeah. all kinds of pictures. It was wonderful. Great. Um, and then Fantastic. here's here's the other thing that you don't know. Um, your mom started following me on Facebook, so she wants well, to be invited over too. Of course. Well, Same. you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see again. If I get uh, you, give me the hot tub. You give me the hot tub invite. Uh, there could be some uh, some reciprocation. Well, just saying, I, I'm a little. I'll, ahead. I'll even I'll even pick up some Fago for you. I'm 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 ahead on the invites to houses. So okay. yeah, this one's true. on you at this point. All right. Go home we'll and ask see. your mom if it's okay if I come over. Oh, <laughs> uh, you ready to get into this? <clears throat> yep. <clears throat> All right, let's do it. Nearly 200 names that previously had been redacted from court documents in a lawsuit against Jeffrey Epstein's former accomplice, Ghislaine Maxwell have been made public. Former President uh, Bill Clinton, Prince Andrew, Leonardo DiCaprio, Cameron Diaz, magician David Copperfield, and billionaire Glenn Dubin are among those listed. Now, many of the names belong to people that have not been accused of wrongdoing. Of course, Epstein committed suicide in his cell back in 2019 uh, following his arrest on charges of sex trafficking. So what would you do if you were on that list? I would be honest about it and say, well, depending on what, look, if somebody offers you a ride on a plane, on a private jet, you're probably going to take it. I mean, I'm, I would be willing to bet. I don't know the percentage of people who knew what they were going into. Right. Knew what this was about. I don't think anybody. And the percentage you don't I, think that anybody knew what I, it was about. I mean, about. there probably were some that knew what was going on, right? Once, once you're taking 60, But you bring up a name flights, like Cameron Diaz? Do you picture yeah, exactly. her as a predator at all? I mean... Okay, no, well, here's the thing. None of us know. Right. And I'm not I'm not going to... Again, I'm not broad brushing and saying everybody or, everybody or anybody's guilty of this, that, or the other. That's not right. what I'm saying. When it's different when some... Okay, if, if somebody's been on there once or twice, whatever... But when it's 60, 70 times, now you know something's was, a little you know, cool. Then something's going on. There's something going on. Again, you and I were completely naive to this until we uh, interviewed our friend Andy Donawald about a yeah. decade ago. Yep. And then, then our eyes really became open yep. to just how pervasive this shit is yep. and how disgusting it is. And how, especially when you're dealing with, Child, like once it gets into the the children, I mean, sex sex trafficking is bad enough. Yep. But once you once you get into the 12 children, and thirteen year olds, yeah, it's younger bad. and younger, and some where you're, it's and, and and part of the part of the thing is so many of us we don't want to know. No, no, it's one of those things you're you gonna live in denial. You just you don't you, you live in denial, and you've got powerful people on both sides that don't want you to know. Yeah. And it's it's uncomfortable, it's gross. Yep. It's it's worse than man. we want to believe and this is over, just over the break. <clears throat> I'm up all night, you know, looking for whatever to watch on documentaries and things like that. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's got a private island that was pretty creepy and I'm not really pointing fingers or trying to stir the pot or anything like that, but mm-hmm. Richard Branson's got a private island. And he even says in the documentary, he's like, you know, we had a couple people here running it that insisted the staff couldn't drink or have relations with any of the guests. And Richard Branson goes, yeah, that lasted two years. So 
Yeah, Appa- man, I'll, you know, again. apparently that's the thing to do on these private islands is you hire nothing but perfect hard body smoking hot mm-hmm. 20-somethings to, to beat your staff. Or, yes. And then you encourage or, them to go out and get wasted and sleep with the mm-hmm. guests at night. And it's, that's, again... That's what it's, I took it's, from the thing with well, Francis. The, and, well, you know, if, they, if they're in their 20s and they make that choice... That's different. Exactly. That's different. But when you're talking about, what, what Kids, you know, yeah. the, the CD horrific, because that's a thing that just... Again, there was that movie that came out, Sound of Freedom, that a lot of people saw that kind of highlighted and it wasn't really talked about right it wasn't really because we don't want to talk about it no. we don't want it and again it goes back to we don't want to know no and we need to and it's it's really what's going on and it, again we think of it because we think of this this happens in faraway land somewhere right. else these other countries it doesn't happen here and it's it's worse than anybody wants to think about know about or even investigate in there a lot of ways so Anyway, what else is going on? More old people getting high. This, according to the latest survey, 8% of people over 65 admitted to using marijuana in the past year. That rate has doubled since 2015. This makes perfect sense. In fact, I got to believe it's higher than 8%. You, I, I'm, I'm telling you right now, I, I'm 65. Yes, 100%. When I'm 65. Oh, oh, I thought maybe I was saying, I'm, I'm lying about me, your age. All I'm putting, years. no, 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 no. You're I'm vain enough 50, to do that. I'm putting, no, I don't do that. I'm 51. 14 years from now. Yeah. And maybe before that. And I, again, I don't, I'm not saying anything. I'm not, I'm not pro or con. I'm not go. pro or con anything. Fence but it makes it. sense. You know, you're one of these, you, you, you get to an age, you've hit retirement maybe, you just, you know. You need a little break. You got the grandkids, especially, I mean, you got the grandchildren or something. I think there's an around. acronym for that. What's that? W-G-A-F. Think about it. <laughs> Who gives up? Oh, there you go. <laughs> so enjoy that retirement. England, there you go. Or, or as they say in England, you're a pensioner. <laughs> And they just oh, they got they got such a way with the language. Isn't that a great la- isn't that a great word? That I want to be awesome. a pensioner someday. Yeah, absolutely. That'd be fantastic. With my radio pension that they invested yeah. in so Oh God. <laughs> so I'm gonna stroke out doing traffic reports at 73. Uh the cr- the cruise ship industry was a boon to Muskegon's economy in 2023. Multiple cruise ships made 18 visits to Ski Town's port with around 2,500 passengers. That generated around $700,000 for the city. Uh, that is fantastic. So, you know, we that's booked a great a place to bring your, fall. Uh, bring your boat gonna, in. We booked a cruise for next fall. We're going to take, mm-hmm. um, we're going to leave from New York and go up the East Coast into Canada during the fall. Oh, really? Yeah. So, well, you know what? I, I uncorked it. I showed Cindy what a cruise was like and, Oh boy! Now, now, it's, the now it's a there. seasonal, yeah. Now, yeah. now it's a seasonal <laughs> thing for you. Now, now, now I've got her in that chariot behind me, going. Whoosh, whoosh. And, yep, there you go. Sorry, Dave, can't make it down to Barry County. I gotta go up I'd to l- Canada. I'd love to come see boat. what's left of Three Dog Night at the Barry <laughs> County Fair, but we're gonna be out on this cruise. <laughs> if they do Shambala, can you record that on your cell phone for me, please? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I had a Chuck neighbor on. Yeah, me and Chuck will be partying in the back. <laughs> Maybe tip some cows. You know what? I got to tell you something about that idea, whole concert thing. Okay, go ahead. For Christmas, and it was like a couple of weeks before Christmas, um, mm-hmm. they announced the Journey and Def Leppard concert down at Comerica oh, yeah. Park next summer. Mm-hmm. Somebody subtly drops the hint. Boy, that'd be a fun show to go to. In other words... You're um, going. You get me tickets, right? There you go. All right, so I get her tickets. And as I'm hitting pay on the Ticketmaster site, I thought to myself, I'm giving Neil Schoen more money. I've known Neil Schoen most of my career, and I think I have a bus pass on my <laughs> You should definitely get free. You should get free tickets. Again, this is. I know, I know, no, but it's just, it doesn't work that way anymore. It, it, just it should, though. I know, it especially should. for old radio 
doofuses like us. And that's why I won't pay for a show because I've never paid for one. I know. Because I, I'm entitled. It says it you're says entitled. Boat pass you're more my... entitled. Yeah, you're it's, more entitled. I could go sleep on the bus if I get tired of journey. Yeah. Sports Pistons lose again, three and thirty-one. They fall to Utah, one fifty-four, one forty-eight. See if they can start another record-breaking streak. Lions, five guys named the NFC Pro Bowl roster: defensive end Aiden Hutchinson, center Frank Ragnow, tight oh, end my Sam favorite. Laporta, a linebacker, special teamer Jalen uh, Mabin, and Panay Sewell, offensive tackle. Way to go, boys! And uh, hey, heading to the playoffs, looking good. Probably going to rest some guys. Uh, although, who knows? Maybe they won't. They still have – maybe they can squeeze into the two seed, but probably not. But anyway, that's sports. Here's Jeopardy. It is uh, fun to say quotations for 400. Fun to say quotations. Okay. Fun to say quotations. Fun to say. Fun to say. Make it something okay. fun to say. Um. All right. Got it. I got okay. a fun to say quote in my head. What is it? I just left. No. I had just left. You didn't short term memory. No, I did. I just right. no. This film badges. We ain't got no badges. We don't need no badges. I don't have to show you no stinking badges. Now, uh, this has got to uh, it, blazing saddles is where I, I heard that. I know it was from a previous movie, but I'm going with Blazing Saddles because that's where I heard that line. We don't need no stinking badges. What is yeah. it? It's the treasure it of the Sierra Madre. Okay, see, I was in no, I had no idea. I mean, I knew my answer was wrong, but that's where I heard that because it was a takeoff of that, which I did not know. Well, in the famous words because of Bob and Doug McKenzie, you take off. No. <laughs> I'm not, you know, I'll, I'll refrain from calling you a hoser. Okay, then. Okay. Good day. Good day. See ya! Happy Thursday, Muskegon. Mostly cloudy skies are expected today, but we do have snow on the way for this weekend and possibly early next week as well. So let's take a look here for a cast brought to you by Trendy Health. Starting out with your weather headlines, we will be mostly cloudy today. We'll have a few breaks in the cloud cover, but most of the lakeshore areas will likely be mostly overcast during the day today. And then we will have some light snow to contend with on Saturday. Likely less than an inch of snow is expected with that. And then maybe an impactful storm system will arrive for next Tuesday and Wednesday. I'll have more details about that later. Temperature wise today will be a little bit above freezing in the low to mid 30s today, 33, 34 degrees across Muskegon County. So for your Thursday, expect mostly cloudy skies. Like I said, a fairly light wind only out of the west northwest at five miles per hour as well. So we won't have that much of a wind chill today with a high of 33 and a low of 26 with mostly cloudy skies sticking around as clouds will begin to increase as we go into Friday. But pretty much all the attention over the next several days, weather-wise, will be on the storm system that will probably arrive next Tuesday, lasting into Wednesday. As of now, it looks like a track or an average track for the storm system is Arkansas to the Great Lakes region. It all depends on where exactly it goes though, because some ensemble members do have this storm trekking over Lake Michigan, which, bring, which would bring warmer conditions and also some rain showers turning to snow later in the day on Tuesday going into Wednesday. And then another storm track has a cluster of ensemble members more toward the thumb of Michigan and toward Detroit, which is that blue circle, which means we would be seeing just snow here in West Michigan and heavy snow at that as well. So this is definitely a storm to keep our eyes on. But as of now, it looks like it will be a storm to contend with. It's just depending on where exactly it tracks which will determine what precipitation types we'll see, but expect some wintry weather at least for Tuesday into Wednesday. And that's reflected on the seven-day forecast with a winter storm labeled there with temperatures in the mid-30s then, which means any snow that does fall would be a pretty wet snow and pretty hard to shovel as well. But we'll have to contend with the next several days before we get to that, which means temperatures for the most part will stay in the mid-30s. Like I said, we'll have that light snow on Saturday, only bringing less than an inch of snow out of that. 
and staying pretty cloudy as well with not much sunshine. And that's your Thursday forecast brought to you by Trendy Health on the Muskegon channel and on Coldwoods Weather and enjoy your day today.